recorded. <coughs> We're uh, interviewing Mr. Joseph Beyer at the uh, Albany, New York VA Hospital. It is May 18th, 2001. Michael Akey, interviewer, and uh, Wayne Clark, videographer. Uh, Mr. Beyer, where, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Rochester. Okay. You were born when? March 31st, 1899. Ah, what was it like in Rochester back then? Well, of course, uh, the night that I was born, they had the worst blizzard that they ever had <laughs> in the history of Rochester. Well, that was quite a greeting, wasn't it? Yeah. Of course, it didn't make any difference to me. I didn't know what, what it was all about. Uh-huh. You grew up in the city? Yes. Okay. And uh, where'd you go to school? I went to school in, uh, in the Rochester School. Uh, and graduated from uh, East High School. Mm -hmm. And um, when World War I broke out, what were you doing? Well, I was a student. You were a student? Yes. And what did you think about uh, what was going on over in Europe? Well, you know, I grad we had a two graduation dates in that time from high school. Uh -huh. One was in January and the other one was in, uh, in June. Okay. So, at the time that I graduated, I was 17 years old. Uh -huh. And uh, as I, my birthday was going to be in... Uh, the end of March, I knew that I would be uh, <clears throat> drafted. Mm -hmm. Well, they were started a program, and some of the government started this program, and some of the colleges throughout the country called the Students Army Training Corps. Okay. The purpose of that program was to develop students. Mm -hmm to uh, <clears throat> become officers and uh, it was training in college and uh, taking specific subjects. Mm -hmm. So I was fortunate enough to get into a unit that was started in Rochester that particular year. Mm -hmm. There was a unit, of, they had just a barracks, and they had room for 60 students. Now, where was uh, the barracks located? On the campus of the college. Okay, which college was it? University of Rochester. Okay. It was, uh, <clears throat> it was unusual for a college as small as that to have one of those units. Right. But I think it was through the influence of... Uh, Russ Fries, the president of the uh, University of Rochester, and George Eastman, mm -hmm. in order to uh, develop one in Rochester. Ah. What was the program like? What, uh, what well, kind of the program work? consisted of uh, you go to college in the morning mm -hmm. and you take the regular college course, which is uh, designed so that it's, it's completed by one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And from one o'clock in the afternoon, you go on, you're on military mizzou, uh, you have under military control, mm -hmm. and you do your um, military problems and uh, your various uh, uh, duties for the rest of the day. Uh, <clears throat> What year did this begin? Big pardon? What year did this begin? That began in uh, 1917. Okay. And did you like the program? Yes, the program was very good. Mm -hmm. Of course, they gave you the opportunity of uh, majoring in whatever you thought would be uh, your preference if mm -hmm. you got in, when you got into the... Uh, to the Army. The program consisted of, uh, you, you, of uh, your choice of uh, the branch mm -hmm. and also uh, of uh, 
Of also picking the, uh, the the different the particular part of the army mm -hmm. service that you thought you would like, and I chose communications. Oh well, now what was that program coursework well, like? Well, for the first six or eight months, all you did was study electricity mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> the army manual. And uh, as far as the other army, uh, uh, the, the other army uh, duties consisted of drilling and the various uh, types of things that uh, you, you would do, you would get if you attended an mm -hmm. army training camp. Now, were the uh, the army officers part of the regular army that were doing the instruction? Yes. Okay, they weren't National Guard or. No, not the National Guard. Regular Army. You, yes, and you were, when you enlisted in this program, you had to agree to serve at least three years active service okay. when you graduated. Mm -hmm. Now, how long was the coursework for? Okay. Well, it was a regular college course. Four years. Four years, yeah. Okay. But, the, but the, uh, the war was over in 1918. Mm -hmm. November 11, 1918, the war was over. Well, you had your choice. You could get an honorable discharge from the United States Army, or else you could continue with your college course. Mm -hmm. And when you graduated, you would be put on the active reserve. Okay. And what did you choose? I chose to uh, take an honorable discharge. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, so you were discharged in 1918? Big time. You were discharged in 1918? That's right. Okay. What did you do after you were discharged? Well, after I was discharged, uh, discharged, my family had the financial problem. Mm -hmm. So I was unable to finish the rest of my college course. Mm -hmm. But uh, I sort of was also uh, active in the reserve. Oh. So for five or six years, every weekend, I would have to go in for some training. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it like being in the reserve in that period? Big time. What was it like being in the reserve? Well, the war was over. I mean, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't bad. It was a nice group of people mm -hmm. to spend the weekend together. Where did you usually train? What? Where did you usually train? Well, either in Watertown or in Fort Dix. Okay. Okay. Uh, was Pine Camp. That was Pine Camp at that point? What Pine? It was Pine Camp up in Watertown? Oh, I don't think it was called Pine Camp. It was okay. called, I don't remember what the, uh, what the official name of that mm -hmm. camp was up there. Now, uh, what was it like during wartime in Rochester? Uh, was it life any different? Well, you know, wartime in Rochester was no different than wartime in any other city. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that the First World War was a war in the trenches. Right. I mean, the, the population, general population, uh, was not affected as it is now, but by airplane raids and things of that kind. Right. Citizens were more or less protected. Mm -hmm. But if you were in the trenches, it wasn't too good. Right. Because there was a trench opposite you, and uh, when you went to, when you want to advance, they would the, the, send an artillery barrage mm -hmm. ahead of you to the to the trench that was uh, opposite you, and then you would charge by foot. Mm -hmm. And it was there was a lot of at that time there was a lot of uh, of uh, <clears throat> hand to hand fighting. Right now, uh, was there rationing in Rochester during the war? I don't remember World War One rationing. Mm -hmm. you remember any of the war bond drives? What? Any of the war bond drives? Oh yeah. What were they like? Well, you know how about war pine drivers. You know, they have uh, 
gatherings and they have people going out and they have various occasions and they have uh, people gathered together and uh, and to, uh, with the purpose of uh, buying and uh, you know bonds in right. order to separate the, in order to uh, uh, help the war effort. Mm -hmm. Was uh, Rochester pretty supportive in that? Well, uh, yes, uh, the same as the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the country was pretty much behind the war effort at that point. Well, uh, yeah, listen, uh, there wasn't any opportunity to know whether they were behind or not. The war was there, so you took it as it was. Okay. Okay. Um, you knew uh, any of your friends go into the service uh, overseas? Well, yes. Uh, you know, when uh, when the uh, student time training car became known, there was a, uh, <coughs> a, 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 a very large number of applicants mm -hmm. because of the fact that uh, people would rather go into the uh, service as, a, as an officer rather than as a as a private. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you chose your own uh, branch of service, then at least you knew that you were doing something that you would like. Right. Now, did uh, many of your classmates in the Army Training Corps program, did they they continue with their college after the war was over? Well, after the war was over, uh, the government suddenly decided they didn't need any more officers. Uh -huh. So they put them all on uh, inactive service. Okay. Nobody went overseas or anything. Okay, but did many stay in college? Well, most of them uh, took the, uh, uh, the uh, honorable discharge. There were a few that took it, and the ones that took it got their college education and they didn't have to go to the spur of it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, <laughs> when World War II came up, you yeah. were, what were you doing at that point? Well, I was a sales representative at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> there was a program at that time that uh, was sponsored by the government where they were looking for people that were qualified to operate uh, uh, post exchanges. Mm -hmm. So I was married at that time, but I didn't have any children. So another friend of mine and myself, we applied for that uh, particular program. Mm -hmm. So we were interviewed and the, <clears throat> the uh, captain that interviewed us said that he thought that uh, we had the qualifications on all that, but inasmuch as we were in the wholesale end of the business mm -hmm. instead of the retail, he didn't know whether we qualified. So he said he would let us know. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this other friend of mine and myself uh, found out that there was another interview uh, section scheduled for Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So we went down there to apply. And over there they didn't say anything about the difference between the wholesale and retail. So did you get in the so, program? Anyway, they said to let us know. A year later I get a telegram telling me to report to Fort Dix at such and such a date, such and such an hour for a physical. <laughs> My wife at that time was three months pregnant. Oh dear. And when she found out about it, oh she, <laughs> she was very much, very much disturbed. She said, you can't go away now when we're going to have a child. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. So I ignored the telegram. <laughs> and nothing happened be because you ignored it? Well, I wasn't, after all, I wasn't in the right. Army. Right. I mean, I hadn't been signed up for anything. There was no reason why I had to, uh, True. Uh, I had to uh, go, go in. 
unless it was voluntary. Mm -hmm. So you uh, stayed uh, in sales during the war? Yeah. Okay. Um, was the attitude of the country different during World War II than World War I? No, I think the attitude was a lot different. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, that was a, that was a different type of a war. We were fighting a war against aggression, mm -hmm. a war against power. And, uh, you know, the First World War was, was really indefinite because of the fact that they called it the war to uh, preserve democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know how successful they were in promoting democracy. Uh, Wilson was, collected, was elected president uh, in, dur during the early part of that war, and the motto at that time was he kept us out of the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, about six months after he was elected, we were in the war. Now, what did you think of that? What? What did you think of that? Well, uh, you know, it, 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 it was a question of, uh, I think the reason that we got in is because of the fact that uh, our convoys were uh, supplying the Allies with, with all their war supplies from one Judy thing or another. And uh, what uh, Germany did at that time, mm -hmm. they were, the submarines were damaging and sinking uh, right. American ships. And I guess that was the... Uh, immediate causes of, of, yeah. of our entry, but I think we were on the verge of entering anyway. Now, uh, so after World War II, you, you, you probably, would you stay in sales until you retired? No, I did a, I did a very lot of various other things. Mm -hmm. I, my father, my father took sick when I was just 13 years old. <coughs> <laughs> he was a painting contractor, and uh, <clears throat> his doctors thought they knew what was the matter with him, that they didn't know what caused him. So after five or six years of uh, experimentation and operations of one thing or another, they sort of gave up. Huh. And he gave up too, so we were in a financial problem. I had three other sisters, so my mother insisted that we all get good educations, and we developed a very uh, huge debt because there was no Medicare, there was mm -hmm. no Social right. Security, no Medicaid, and uh, those debts were sacred debts because they were made with friends or with right. relatives, and if the person that took out the debt wasn't able to repay it, the children did. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's, that was the way that uh, welfare was conducted in those days. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, do uh, you have anything else you'd like to say about uh, World War I or World War II? Your experiences? Well, as I say, I didn't have very much real experience in the war. My, my uh, warfare duty was strictly training. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciated the fact that I got the opportunity to get the two years at least of college. And, you know, it wasn't easy because of the fact that if your grades got down below a B, you were, uh, <clears throat> you were put on uh, probation. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't approve by the next term, you were in the front lines in six weeks. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that was incentive, wasn't it? Yeah. That kept your grades up. Well, the, uh, it, it was a good experience for sure. me. I mean, I, I uh, fully expected that I would be over in France fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, the war. The war was over before that. Now, did you make some friends in the program who you stayed oh, friends yeah. with? Oh, okay. yeah. Well, that's very good. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Byer. Oh, we I, appreciate I hope it. That, I hope that what I, 
I told you it was of interest. Oh, that. absolutely. So very, very much so. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's see. I have a little paperwork to fill out. Everybody's got paperwork. Yeah.